My name's Kim Steffen. I work for Tweed Landcare as a project officer and uh, we were lucky enough to receive a Smart Farms grant from the Australian Government to bring the Soil Key Renovator up to the Tweed to trial it in a subtropical climate. Um, there's a lot of the paddocks in the area uh, not as productive as what they could be. Um, a lot of farmers seem to rely on the good rainfall that we have during the summer period and good growth during the summer, but then during the winter period um, things die back and, um, and cattle have to be sold off or they just lose condition and then they wait for the wet season again. So there's, there's an opportunity here to work on pastures to try to improve them. We can do a lot to improve the soil, um, which is really beneficial to the long-term sustainability of, of uh, livestock production in the Tweed, but it's also important that to be sustainable you've got to be economically viable. Looking at a winter mix, something that we could sow in the autumn that could produce feed through winter and into spring, and potentially some of the species that could carry into summer to improve the quality of, of the summer feed. So if you can achieve that, we can get our utilisation rates up, Therefore, we can carry more stock and each hectare becomes more profitable. So um, we've had our baseline carbon test and testing done through AgriProve um, and they'll come back over a number of times through the next 25 years and monitor the soil carbon that we're capturing. So that's one of the key goals um, of the project, to capture carbon. Um, the second one is to improve soil health and that's through using the multi-species crops, which have two, two benefits. One is the solar panels that come up, the leaf or the vegetable matter that are coming up out of the ground will be nutrient dense food for our cattle and chickens. And the second one is putting carbon back into the ground. So actually sequestering that carbon from the air into the soil is a real big benefit of the fertility on the farm. So it gives you a yield increase, plus it also gives you that increase in biodiversity, the natural biodiversity on your farm. You're not overloading any uh, type of artificial nutrient into your farming system. It's just what you can provide naturally grown on your own farm. Uh, we, we watched uh, uh, Tweed Shire Council do the soil tests and uh, I, I guess the things that stood out was um, there was a test done uh, about the ability of the top soil to absorb water um, and we noticed that uh, the top soil takes quite a long time to absorb the water which means we have a lot of runoff so I think that's an area that particularly with a soil key machine, it, you know, in, in a sense, uh, aerating the surface and creating a better root structure, we should see uh, the water absorbed much quicker after the test. So that's what I'm looking for. And I think the other area that we noticed that we, we had pH levels of uh, five, five and a half, which is actually we've got acidic soil. So, um, and, and that's not unusual for a grazing country that probably hasn't been improved. That's another area that I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing at the end of that. We should see that change, balance. that balance come in. Improving the soil health, um, especially by sequestering carbon and doing it the way that we're doing it, you can improve the soil structure and in improve the soil nutrition as well, the availability of nutrients. So once those plants that we're planting, we've got some deep a variety of different seeds and things and that they have, some of them have deep tap roots so they're able to help the moisture penetrate deeper into the soil. When we first wrote this application the tweed was going through a drought. The soils became quite rock hard and there was just no permeability of those soils to actually retain moisture and we felt that if there was some ways that we could better prepare um, those soils and have better, um, you know, there's the word going around drought resilience, then um, we could pot potentially hold some of that moisture for longer in the soils. It's the importance of the soils is the start of everything, isn't it? Um, and, and if we can get that right, then I think everything else will flow on from that. Mm -hmm. so. We're looking to improve the biodiversity and then also the, I think, the improved uh, cattle production as well. So many facets of um, improving the cattle production and making it more sustainable. And I think also, you know, for me, improving the efficiency of the farm at the moment, so the layout and the structure and how we move the cattle and how we work the cattle and how we rotate the paddocks. So we're, we're, what we've got here is good, but we want to make it great by making it far more efficient and vibrant in what, what we're doing and give the cattle the best possible uh, soils and grasses um, and, um, and just improve the total environment here. We were told when we moved on to the farm that there was no way in the world that we'd be able to make a, a living off this farm because the soils were so poor. 
Um, and I mean, that really spurred us on with regenerative farming practices rather than um, applying high inputs such as uh, fertilisers and chemicals onto the farm to, I guess, get instant gratification. We're here for the long term to produce nutrient dense food um, for the people that come to the markets and buy our food. Being part of this experience and uh, with Landcare and the Soil Key, um, I guess, you know, it's the old adage of having a good network of people around you that, you know, that um, you can learn a lot from quickly and um, we could never do that on our own. Another one of the goals that we really wanted to, to get out of the project is to share our learnings with the community and other farmers. Basically what we want to do is show farmers in the, in the Tweed Valley, which are traditionally high, input, high chemical input farmers with cane and other crops that they grow here. Our goal is to show them that you don't need those, those chemical inputs to grow beautiful, healthy food and to derive an income from, well, we've only got 120 acres and there's not too many farmers in the Tweed Valley that can say they support not only their own family, but other families from 120 acres. So yeah, we're really looking to be able to share our learnings um, with the wider farming community. One of the um, aims of the project was greater profitability for the farmers. And we, we hope that they'll not only get that in the carbon credits, but they'll also be able to see that in their cattle production. So by closing that winter gap, those cattle should main, be able to maintain their weight gains throughout the winter period. But they'll also see the benefits from um, the increased soil health um, as well, and you know, greater resilience against drought and those sorts of things, and just a uh, generally healthier farm. Two years later and uh, we're a lot wiser than what we were before. Uh, this project has been uh, particularly challenging for us and Landcare's learned a lot and I think the farmers have learned a lot. Um, so when we first applied for this grant we were in an unprecedented drought in the Tweed and it was important for us to try to find you know, better drought proofing mechanisms for the farms and now um, we found ourselves to be in record-breaking floods. One of the other things that came out of the flood, especially in 2022, the big February floods, is that um, we were due to sow our pastures in March and um, miraculously we were able to still do that in all locations, um, but perhaps on one of the lower-lying farms we, maybe we shouldn't have because the way the machine worked, it has created some heaped-up areas and some grooves in the ground and so we would probably advise that it's not done when soils are inundated. We can confidently say that uh, the combination of using the soil key with multi-species pastures and rotational grazing has been successful. Yes, we've learned a lot about uh, multi-species pasture cropping uh, in the Tweed uh, with the project over the last two years. But it's important that if we're going to maximise the returns uh, and, and outcomes from undertaking this sort of a, an exercise, that we need to, to understand a few key, key points. First point is that um, Soils in the Tweed are often um, low fertility, um, highly acidic and have high levels of aluminium. So we need to get a soil test to understand what we're starting with and if necessary apply lime and or gypsum and potentially a capital application of fertiliser to get the soil in the right state before we start uh, planting a new seed mix. The second point is that uh, this project has used the Soil Key Renovator which has done a good job but for many um, it requires a 130 horsepower tractor and um, that may be out of their reach. So we have done some trials with um, alternative uh, planting equipment using direct drills, using uh, air seeders, even using a simple broadcast with a spreader. Um, and we found that the results have given us similar above ground yields. So for someone wanting to start, um, a simple capital outlay of a good mower mulcher and a fertiliser spreader would be adequate to, um, to start uh, multi-species pasture cropping. The third point is that um, to get the most out of these pastures it's important that you undertake rotational grazing. That way you get uh, better growth and also you get a better distribution of manures to minimise ongoing fertiliser requirements. And the important thing is if, if you're going to undertake um, rotational grazing probably the cheapest way is with, with good electric fencing but also remember that you need to allow stock have access to good fresh water at all times. And I guess the final thing is that, uh, like most projects, they always throw up a few more questions and I think we need to understand a little bit more about what's going on below, below the ground. We need to understand what's happening to the, to the soil structure and, 
and the soil chemistry, but also we need to have uh, a bit more understanding of what's going on in terms of soil biology. By using the soil key to sow those seeds into the ground to get those more diverse pastures, the soil key has helped by creating a really um, good bed for the uh, seeds to get established. It re reduced competition um, between the existing grasses and um, it's helped to aerate the soil and improve the soil structure. Another aspect of the project that we found to be really important was rotational grazing. By setting up the paddocks and breaking them into smaller paddocks, just even using low cost fencing really made a difference. Before we were going into it, we w weren't really sure about how long we needed to wait. So you have to wait about six to eight weeks before you can allow the uh, cattle to go on once after sowing the seeds. So you do need to have sacrificial paddocks to put the cattle or you need to be prepared to hand feed them. The other thing is that when you first put the cattle on, it's best just to put them on just for a really light uh, graze so they can just tip the plants and not overgraze them too much and just make that a quick rotation. So we did the soil key, two winter mixes over two years. We added uh, all different types of species of plants for various reasons to improve the soils and fix nitrogen and the outcome was positive. Uh, it was definite improvement from the first year to the second year and we've seen you know better growth and better root systems and uh, I think you know much better uh, ability for the land to be able to uh, you know use the water that's been fallen onto it rather than running off um, and we've also increased the amount of feed we have for the cows as well. Very, very happy we were involved with this project. We have made some wonderful connections with people in the local community um, and there's absolutely no regrets. The, the hard work was worth it. So we had um, two rounds of the soil key renovator on the farm. With the first year we had a specific um, blend of, I think it was uh, approximately nine different varieties of seed that we put into the ground. Um, and the second year we adjusted, um, we did the same thing again, the second year soil key renovator, um, but we adjusted the seed mix based on the previous year's results. The first year we experienced um, our chicken eggs were actually larger overall. We noticed an increase in the size of the eggs. We don't understand how that happened. Um, it must just be through high, higher um, nutritional pastures, I guess. Um, and we also seen an improvement in the colour of the egg, uh, egg yolk quality. So everybody loves a really dark orange yolk and we were achieving that through the, the, par the new pastures. And the cattle actually put on weight as well. We had two years of um, really uh, extraordinary weather, I guess, um, during both uh, before, during and after the cultivation of the seed. So we had results that weren't as good as we expected. The really wet soil, what ended up happening was the cultivated soil, instead of being spread out as a, a um, nice fine mist across the, the cultivated channels, it ended up heaping into the middle and creating a row, uh, quite pronounced um, mounds and furrows in the ground which are now still present um, across the farm but that's part and parcel to be being part of a trial um, you've got to expect the good and the bad when you talk about regenerative farming and uh, increasing carbon and uh, nutrient levels in the soil the way that we are um, without applying um, chemical inputs um, the process is slow so it is a long-term project and you need to be prepared um, for that long-term result. The trial um, was an absolute springboard for our start to regenerative farming. It gave us a, a huge boost, um, something that would have taken us years um, to start to implement, was implement, implemented within two years. And now it's given us a really good basis to work from to go forward. Um, so yeah, super, super happy that we're on board for the trial. The biggest thanks that goes out is really to the farmers who are willing to take this risk and come on this journey with us. Without people taking a risk, we're never gonna learn anything different and um, it's just really important.